theater fans and happy Tuesday, not to mention happy new year. I'm not even sure if I can still wish you happy new year. We're pretty far into the first month of the year, but I guess since we haven't talked since last year, I have a little latitude in that department. Um, I've taken a few weeks off to enjoy the holidays, relax with family, you know, recharge the batteries, but we are back in the driver's seat and ready to take on 2024. Really hard to believe that uh, we are that far past the year 2000, 24 years. It's just crazy. So with that, I'd like to welcome you to this week's episode of Home Theater News Review. My name is Todd Anderson, your host here on the show and editor at the Home Theater Forum, AV Nirvana. Com. Coming to you from our nation's capital, where we are digging out from our first official snowstorm of the year, and actually our first accumulation of snow that we've really had in about 700 days. Believe it or not, the two uh, major airports here in the area hadn't recorded an inch of snow in over 700 days, which is just mind-blowing. But we had just enough the other day. Allow me to break out the snowblower, and I'm always game for any excuse for using tools and heavy machinery, so good times indeed. You can watch this podcast on our YouTube channel or listen to it on Spotify and iTunes. Subscribe, review, share, like, all of that good stuff. We definitely appreciate the support. Well, we have officially cut bait with 2023, and the new year has already gotten a jump start with CES. Of course, CES stands for the Consumer Electronics Show, which takes place every single January in Las Vegas, Nevada. Do you believe it is the world's largest trade show? And it definitely feels like it uh, when you're there. At least it did pre-COVID. Uh, last year when I was there, it felt like things were coming back, which was good to see. And I heard this year was equally busy. So hopefully we're going to get back to that face-to-face -face interaction, which is so important. Also, hands-on interaction with uh, products that are out there is also super-duper important, uh, from my opinion, at least. Now, with that said, I actually decided not to attend uh, CES this year in favor of some family plans, uh, but I still monitored things from afar. And today, we'll break down some of the news on the audio side of things and next week, we'll dissect what's happening on the TV front. Now, the show from an audio perspective has changed so much over the past few years, particularly since COVID. It used to have this huge presence of high-end audio uh, that was in the uh, one of the towers at the Venetian not the case anymore, but that has not stopped the event from playing host to several big announcements, which leads us to our first headline stories captured by Focal uh, and Ohio's very own SVS. And in an interesting twist, SVS actually tips its cap to Focal with its new Ultra Evolution series of speakers, which have seven different models headlined by the flagship Pinnacle Tower that offers a robust and sophisticated look that echoes the luxury aesthetics of brands like Focal and even some hints of Wilson Audio. In particular, I think the speaker is reminiscent of Focal's content number two, which stands tall and has this kind of bowed appearance that steps the speaker's drivers, placing the tweeters slightly back as compared to mid-range drivers and woofers. This is a designed technique that emphasizes time alignment of drivers uh, in a physical sense, helping to ensure that sound from each driver reaches a listener's ears at the same time. Now, this is not something that we've seen from SVS before. Their current and past models certainly, I would say, lean more towards designs that one would call, I guess, perhaps uh, more traditional, though I think you can argue that its Ultra Towers got away from that a little bit uh, with its slanted backside and very aggressive styling and those side-firing opposed uh, woofers that are down on the bottom of the cabinet. Based on what we've seen so far, the series, I think, is going to grab a ton of attention 
once it begins shipping. Now, design elements from the flagship Pinnacle speaker trickle down throughout the Ultra Evolution line, which includes two other tower designs, two bookshelf models, a center channel, and an elevation style speaker that can be mounted on a ceiling or high in a wall. So essentially, you're gaining access to three tower models that give owners a lot of flexibility in terms of budget, size, and low-end output capabilities. There's a traditional bookshelf and a smaller mountable uh, bookshelf, and then you have your center channel. Now, the Ultra Elevation model is a spruced up take on the Prime Elevations that they've been selling for the last five or six years. I actually have eight of those speakers tasked in my very own home theater room for both Atmos duty and Aura 3D duties. They're very versatile, easy to mount, and you know, with this new release, I'm liking the fact that uh, these Ultras are going to give you access to a bit more depth of sound, uh, which is really honestly becoming more and more important with technologies such as uh, Direct's Active Room Treatment uh, Room Correction software. So that's a nice little benefit of getting a little bit more oomph out of those speakers, which traditionally were allowed to be left a little bit more on the thin side. Pricing on these speakers ranges from 899 bucks for the center up to 5k per pair for the Pinnacle Tower. Uh, conveniently, the other two towers are priced at 4k and 3k respectively. As far as shipping, we're looking at a late March, early April time frame. Uh, we have lots more details and information about the drivers, the cabinets, and our news article over on our website. I'll drop a link to our news section in the description, and I encourage you to head on over there and check it out. Focal also launched a new speaker line. This one is replacing its Aria 900 series that's enjoyed a decade run. This new line is called the Aria Evo X and includes a compact bookshelf model, three different floor standing speakers, and a horizontal center channel. The company says that output across the Evo speakers is improved by new driver elements, including the new M-shaped inverted dome TAM tweeter, which Focal says reproduces treble more faithfully, including the ability to play up to 30,000 kilohertz, which is well outside of the range of what humans can hear. Uh, they've also made adjustments to mid-range and low-end drivers. Pricing on those speakers runs from $999 for the center channel to nearly $6K per pair for the Evo X number four tower speaker. That is the uh, flagship speaker in the lineup. We have more information in our new section, which, as I just mentioned, is linked below. Klipsch, they also got in on the act revealing what it's calling the Flexus sound system. This is co-developed by Klipsch and Onkyo. In fact, it's the industry's first powered by Onkyo product, which references PCBs embedded in the sound bars uh, in the Flex sound system uh, that drive the system's sound quality and connectivity experience. Klipsch is giving us two different sound bar models in the Flexus series. We have the Flexus Core 100 and the Flexus Core 200. Those are landing in the $300 to $450 range. The beefed up Core 200 boasts 3.1.2 channels of output, featuring a dedicated horn-loaded tweeter that's included to help with dialogue reproduction. And the Core 100 steps things down just a little bit with a stereo array of drivers but it offers the same level of HDMI compatibility found on the more expensive 200 model, giving you access to eARC or enhanced audio return channel and 8K video along with Bluetooth connectivity. So basically what that means is either soundbar can connect to a TV via HDMI, allowing you to source advanced audio codecs like uh, Dolby Atmos when you're streaming content directly to your TV. Now there are two add-on wireless speaker options with a satellite speaker intended for surround channel duties and a wireless subwoofer with a 10 inch driver. Pricing on those two options is also super accessible. It's looking like Flexus will begin shipping 
sometime in the April time frame. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Klipsch also used CES to throw its hat into the automotive space, collaborating with the car maker Infinity and Panasonic to bring audio to the new Infinity QX80. This is a, uh, I would say a nice marketing move for Klipsch and will be a key selling point for the luxury SUV. So I think it's safe to assume you'll see Klipsch's name flashed during Infinity advertisement campaigns later this year. Okay, moving on, we have news from the immersive audio company Oro, which demonstrated its next-gen codec Oro CX in Las Vegas. This is a scalable product designed for content creators, distributors, streaming services, and manufacturers. Now, by scalability, we're talking about a variety of audio resolutions, whether you're talking about totally lossless audio all the way down to audio that is highly compressed, and those are included in a single bitstream thanks to multiple audio waveform coding techniques. It also has scalable sample rates that allow a single bitstream to carry 48, 96, and 192 kilohertz. And that allows a decoder to extract only what it needs from a single encode, depending on its capabilities. Ultimately, working with Oro CX requires less storage space and fewer encoding passes, both of which Oro says will save considerable time, manpower, and costs as compared to other modern encoding options. It also has the flexibility to transmit objects embedded in the same bitstream for immersive audio. In addition to supporting a wide range of flexible broadcast features, such as dialogue enhancement and localized audio for multiple languages, it also enables interactive and assistive audio where the quality of the immersive experience can be set higher than the additional audio tracks included in a stream, which essentially guarantees a high quality, best immersive experience while providing better access to every user. Okay, so what does this mean for you? Well, currently not much. It's a technology that's gonna take some time to roll out and integrate into streaming platforms, but it represents a huge step in the right direction because it promises to give us access to high quality streaming without bulky data. So better quality sound without clogging up those data pipelines. Uh, definitely a big win for the consumer. Uh, no secret that I'm a big fan of what Oro currently offers, particularly when it comes to the Oromatic upmixer found on lots of different receiver brands. With it engaged, audio just sounds so right to my ears, and I'm very excited to see them pushing uh, quality in the streaming world, where current audio codecs are definitely a bit underwhelming as compared to what we can get on Kaleidoscape or Disc. And right now we're set to have Aura join us on AV Nirvana live sometime soon. That's a live stream. So you'll be able to hop on and ask questions. Uh, so we'll learn a bit more about Oro CX and how they view it from their end uh, when we have that episode. Uh, more information about that will be provided soon. And speaking of audio codecs, our old friend MQA is getting a new lease on life with the folks at Lenbrook. The name Lenbrook might not jump out as familiar, but it owns brands such as NAD, PSB Speakers, uh, Blue Sound, names that probably ring a bell. And you may recall that late last year, MQA was purchased by Lenbrook. All of its assets came over, including its brand new SCL6 wireless transmission codec. Well, now Lindbrook has created a new business unit called the Lindbrook Media Group, which separates the company's hardware side from its content side of things. In terms of content, that includes MQA, SCL6, and its heralded high-res platform called Blue OS. This is allowing Lindbrook to minimize conflicts with other MQA licensees, many of whom are competitors to Lindbrook Brands, from what it's doing on its content delivery side of things. Now, keep your eyes peeled for the very first product that will benefit from Lindbrook's acquisition of MQA. That's a headphone that's expected to launch under the brand PSB. We expect to see it ship with SCL6 high-res streaming built in. 
We have several other audio news stories coming out of CES, including a new amp launched by Macintosh. So look for the news article link below and go read up on those stories. And of course, if you'd like to talk about any of these stories, you can do so right on our home theater form. Shifting over to movies, AV Nirvana movie critic Michael Scott apparently didn't see the need to take time off over the holidays. He has pushed 10 new reviews out since our last show, including his most recent 4K review of Varsity Blues. To check out what he's been up to, look down in the description for a link over to his official review section where you'll find it all. Of course, you can chat with Mike about everything that he's reviewing, get his opinion on things, get him your opinion on things, all of that good stuff right over on the home theater forum. In terms of disc sales, the last data we have from MediaPlayNews.com largely mimics what we saw throughout the year, and that is DVD sales accounting for 51% of sales and 4K discs capturing 18%. But on a really interesting note, it looks like Q4 of 2023 was the best selling quarter for 4K discs considering market share, and that is since the format launched in 2018. That landed right around 20%. So not exactly great compared to DVD, which is still capturing half of the market sales, but it's up from last year, which was an overall 16% of sales. That's for 4K discs. And the year before was only 11%. So 4K definitely seems to be gaining some kind of momentum. I'm not sure if it's too late, but it's definitely happening. According to Media Play News, Oppenheimer was the best-selling disc in the last week of 2023, making it a top-selling Blu-ray five different weeks, including every week of December, and the number one selling 4K disc for six straight weeks. All right, admittedly, we've been quiet on the gear review front since our last episode, but there's plenty in the works. In the meantime, you can head over to our homepage to find our most recent product interviews and base hunter episodes. Okay, to finish up the show, let's talk deals. On the disc front, the following 4K discs are great buys right now over on Amazon.com. Christopher Nolan's The Prestige, just a Fabulous film can be had for $17.99. Of course, like I said, that's 4K. John Wick 2, a movie that will remake the way you think about a pencil being a weapon, lands for less than 11 bucks. And the forthcoming release of the Marvels is already up for pre-order. Uh, That ships with a 4K disc, a Blu-ray disc, and a digital code. That can currently be pre-ordered for $31.49, which is 21% off list. Uh, That should begin shipping on February 13th. Now, if you have the itch to see the Marvels in 4K with lossless Dolby Atmos, we're talking about the best possible quality available. You can buy it right now on the Kaleidoscape system for $24.99. They also have Napoleon available for purchase or rental and are hosting the 100 Years of Columbia sale, which finds 55 top-notch 4K and HD titles on sale for just $9.99. And it's worth mentioning that the same kind of special pricing can be found on select Columbia Picture disc titles over on Amazon. So whether you're a Kaleidoscape user or a disc collector, you can take advantage of Sony Pictures Home Entertainment Celebration of Columbia Pictures. On to the gear front. Here are two ridiculously good deals on AVRs. First up, we have Onkyo's TX-NR7100 AVR. That's a 9.2 channel receiver that normally retails for $1,299. Folks, you can find that on Amazon right now for just $689. And yes, that's a model that has Direct Live with a bunch of other high-tech features. I've linked to that deal right down in our show notes. Also, Pioneer Elite's LX505, that's its second-in-command in in its lineup. That is also a 9.2 channel receiver. Normally retails for $1,399. You can get that on sale right now for $884. And that one is also loaded to the brim with all sorts of home theater goodies. I've dropped a link to that 
one down below as well. Those are really just two amazing deals that are going to save you big time bucks. All right, home theater fans, that's a wrap for the week beginning January 15th, 2024. Don't forget, next week we're talking CES and TVs. Please be kind to each other out there, and I look forward to seeing you on the forum at avnirvana.com. Thank you.